So welcome Mattis back again. Today I'm in Salta Lukta and I'm heading out on a 10 day long tour. I have packed up the sleds with most of the gear. Uh, it's really heavy loaded, you know, food for all these days. Uh, even if I have one depot in Orinaka where we're going to catch up more food. I have a brand new sled from Snorre, a skunk sled. And I've never been driving that before. It has a really, really strange brake. I will show you that later. And I have no idea if I'm going to like it or if I'm not going to like it. I really like the other skunk sleds. So hopefully this is not a bad one. This is actually a basket sled, a more classic basket sled. And the other ones I've been using for my sled have been more kind of racing type. So. We will see. Anyway, I'm heading south from Salta Lukta. We are aiming for Jokmok in 10 days. But first, we had to do some mountain, we had to do some camping, and we had to do some forest driving and barbecue and cool, cool cafe, you know, coffee. But I think I'm not filming more during the start because that's the moment when I'm the most stressed during the whole week. So I think we jump, jump straight into the mountains. Choo. So now we are above the tree line. This tour I actually have a, my brand new sled. I also have a brand new tent from Nortent and a brand new stove, Winnerail fast fold wood stove for the tent. Uh, you, I'm going to talk more about that later of course, but right now I have to enjoy this. We are above the tree line. It has come a lot of snow the last days and or night maybe only. If we get some wind on top of this, we will have a serious whiteout. It's already now very greyish, as you see. You don't really see the mountains around us, you see? So it is snowing, it is grey, but it's no wind and the dog's doing fine. There have been a snowmobile on the trail this morning, so we are quite okay. The hard walk. <laughs> oh man! This is a funny side to everything. <laughs> right, somebody's parked a sled in the middle of the path yet again. <laughs> inside two of them it's snowing a lot out there right now and it will continue snowing the whole night so 
I expect maybe 20, 30 centimeters of fresh snow on the trail tomorrow. And we have 40 kilometers plus to the next cabin, Akza. But now, time for bed after a nice day. It's a new day and it has been snowing like 20-30 centimeters snow. We have 40k plus today that we had to go to the next cabin. Hopefully there will be some snowmobiles on the trail. But you never know. When you need the snowmobiles they're usually not there. I've been out checking the dogs now and they are fine and I put out Jesse and Ida who have been sleeping inside and now I think it's time to go in and have a coffee in the cabin. Yeah, it's time for coffee. On the trail again and we had a really late start today but it's both good and bad the good thing is that we maybe get the snowmobile trail soon two snowmobiles have passed by so we get a little bit help of the trail the bad thing is that we will be very late and now we're meeting other dogs teams so this is probably Manu let's see how we deal with this hey again Hey again! Hey again! Finally we get the trail at least, that's super, super. Super cool with good leader dogs. I really enjoy to have good leaders. You just tell them off the trail even if it's a dog team in front of you and they manage it. I actually think we're doing fine now because the trail is kind of good and uh, until now at least. And uh, the dogs keep a good speed. It will be some kicking, some workout in the end of the day, but all over, I think we will have a fine day. And tomorrow is clearing up, blue sky again. It's anyway my birthday today. I'm something like, it's a three and it's a five in the number that I, the number I get. We don't care about the order, if the three is before the five or the five before the three, that's totally not necessary thing. Yes. 
read on the teleprompter and say that you are happy and so on. <laughs> yeah. You are happy? I'm happy. I'm not being held hostage. No. <laughs> <laughs> Get a good picture. I think so. We'll see how it turns out when we yeah. get home. The view is good. Is there any way to put this one on top or can I sort it now? Oh, we should put that first. Is Earl Grey your favorite tea? Or do you drink pretty much any tea? So here we are in Akze, the cabin is there. We had to park in the middle of the place now. Olaf and Christine is leaving with their teams. Christian will film everything with his drone probably. And I try to keep our dogs calm while they're starting. Now it's calm until we will start.
Now the plan is to turn Christian's team, turn Jan's team, turn Constant's team, turn Craig's team, and hopefully my team wait for me here, and then I turn my team. This can... There is no risk for failure. <laughs> Absolutely no risk for failure. Anyone need the toilet? It's not moment now, the toilet. Okay. Yep. Okay, stand up. Stand up. Stand up! I had to say that was a great start. A great start. Everything has could be messed up, but this time we was a kind of lucky and it was a great, great, great day until now. Now, it's never, when it's good like this, it's always possibility that it could change and get worse. So from now, it can't be better at least. Here they're coming behind me. So beautiful. Skerfe, Chatkeli and the gate to Sarit behind us. And now we're still crossing the light hour again. Everybody's behind. It looks fine. Yes. Are you happy? Yeah. It's so beautiful. It's gorgeous out. And the mountain behind you. Oh yeah. Is it nice? This is great. So until now we have had a super nice day. Blue sky, good trail, over frozen lake, through forests, yeah, all that winter thing, you know. And now we're coming closer and closer to Stöktiga, to Pottery Cabin. Today I feel a little bit tired, I don't know why. I think I need a power nap. When you out like this, day after day, week after week, it will be days when you are tired. That's just normal, natural thing.
now we're doing the parking and uh, it's good here because the dogs know exactly where to go so this time it's super easy Ben, ben. Sana. Parking. Oh, what? <laughs> did we do that? No, you did. The, are you sure? <laughs> well, we have a um, cream <laughs> explosion here. Cream explosion. Oh, that's that's bad. It is. It's all over the place. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <I'm excited. laughs> Maybe you should start with a ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> I... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh nej! Förvann! <laughs> alltså, det är ju inte sant. Gud, för... Are you still filming? Yes! <laughs> I just didn't want to put it in the plastic because I didn't know how good it was. Yeah, I have some of the lingonberry jam if I can. You can. That sounds great. Bon appetit. Bon Before you leave the cabin, check the water, firewood, empty the dirty water. Time to dress the dogs and then we take off. So beautiful weather, they promised 
wind and snow from east and you can already see some clouds piling up there. You see the clouds? Yeah. We will see. This guy troll. He's a very hey, he's a very restrictive with people. A little bit shy to a lot of people and also to me. We bought him as a one year old guy for ten months actually. And it took me a while before he started trusting me. Troll! 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 But he's a good working dog and he's really nice. This guy, Carl, he is strange construction because he was maybe supposed to die when he was born. But we, we feed him and made everything to make him surviving, but he had a kind of strange overbite. Really bad overbite. One, two centimeter overbite. And his strange attitude, he have no balls. Uh, he, his penis is super small and his head is big and his front leg is short, his body is big with a short leg, it's more like a duck. <laughs> but he's cute. He's definitely the kind of dog that's never going to be father at our kennel. Hasse, blue eyes, really cozy guy. Then we continue to the girls. Here is Ida, who also is super, super, super skinny because she's not eating. She sleeps inside and wear a jacket. Here we got Nisse. Really, really good leader. Almost as good as his father, Rambo. Rambo was good. Nisse is also super, super, super good. I don't know which one of them that was the best one, but Rambo was good and Nisse is good. That guy, you know him? This guy. This is the world famous Ra Gandalf. The craziest of them all. Gandalf. Not the grey, not the white. Gandalf the crazy. Finally, on the way from Porte. Anyway, on the other side here is Sarek National Park, on the that side of the lake. Jan, who's in the group this time, he have been, he always say that he have been in almost in Sarek several times. While we was doing Sarek trips, he booked several Sarek trips, and all of them, we never came through. And the fact that Sarek doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> It's like Santa Claus. Yeah. We actually just had to turn around before the border of Sarek, or we actually came into Sarek and then we had to escape from snowstorm. See how they're doing behind us? I think they're doing fine. <laughs> the dogs are a little bit too fast, so I try to slow them down with the brake. I want a good average speed during the day, not the top speed in the start. Average speed is what's matter. So, we're doing fine, but what I can see behind me now is that Jan and Craig sled are slower. So, maybe we should at least take some dog food from Jan's sled because he's definitely the slowest team. Oh, yeah. So maybe share a box of dog food from his sled to the other sled. Then we make his sled lighter and our little little bit slower but not much. The Kevin Ward Ula said that the weather forecast had a yellow warning. That really don't say me anything. But, ah yeah, hard weather on the mountain, they said. So, it's not blue sky anymore. 
the wind will increase, it will come wind from east and that put us in a position that we are east of the mountain right now and it will dump down snow probably at the place where we are. I think we will try to put up a camp quite early today in the sheltered terrain. So now we're down on the delta we passed through pickup and the weather starts changing. It starts snowing a little bit and quite grey. We're meeting snowmobile people that are heading out of the valley. And we're heading into the valley. Yeah, yeah, that's life. The way I'm working is that I have a basic plan for the tour and uh, then you change it a lot. So right now I'm a little bit... Um, uh, we have not been driving long. We've only made 18 kilometers right now and quite fast kilometers. So we haven't been a long time on the sleds right now. So I want to continue, but if we go higher up in the valley, less protection and less opportunity to make something fun tomorrow. If we camp low in the valley, we have opportunity to go into the valley tomorrow because it will not be windy and leave the base camp and coming back. I, you know, this is what I'm standing here on my sled and thinking about right now. What shall we do? How shall we do it? I will stop somewhere soon and check with the group and then we make a decision or try to make a decision. Now we're driving on the river, frozen river. I follow the snowmobile trail. Just beside here, it can be really bad ice because of the current. And <coughs> you just have to trust the, the snowmobile trail and your own judgment because it can be super wet under the ice. Can be. We have met some people on snowmobile and all of them saying don't go high up, it's much wind up there, it already started with wind and snowfall, so we will stay low tonight, we really stay low tonight, that's good because then we got the decision to not continue higher up, then we don't need to think about what to do. Everybody's tired. Yep. yep. Let's feed the dogs and go to bed. Mm. Feed the dogs and go to bed. I'm ready for party. Re oh. Yes, Jan, we let the party. You and Matty have party. I'm not stopping anybody from partying tonight. <laughs> I'm just not joining in. <laughs> okay. So this is actually the first time I'm using this tent and the stove in this tent. I try to find an organization where I should put my stuff, how I should dig out the snow and um, I'm not really satisfied with the solution we have right now. So next time I put it up I will see what we do with it, if I do something different. Anyway, this tent, the fabric is polyester cotton. And I have the stove inside here, so even if it's heavy snowing, the snow is melting on the outside because of the heat from the stove. It's no condensation in here. It's condensation on the black fabric, as you see behind me, and on the lower part. But it's no condensation on this white fabric. It's totally different experience of camping in this tent than 
for example in the Hilleberg tent. I picked this polyester canvas tent or what, I don't really know what kind of it is, but I picked this, it's called Gamme 6PC. I picked this because of this uh, reason, because you don't need double walls, you just can have one wall on this tent. A little bit more heavy than the other ones, but yeah, until now. I'm happy. Outside it's snowing a lot, really, really a lot. So we are a little bit into Tara Valley and we will see exactly how we continue the tour. I don't have a real idea yet. I'm waiting for, for a cup of tea here and I'm waiting for my sleeping bag. So now I had to go out the last time and get a little bit more stuff from my sled, check the dogs and then into the sleeping bag. Christian, Jan, Craig and Constance, all of them are already in their tent sleeping. I've been running around, filming a little bit, making pictures, and so, checking the dogs. This stove, called Winnerweld Fast Fold Ultra Light, I think. And we bought it in Sweden from a company called Backpacking Light. They have a lot of this gear, lightweight gear. If I would say something about this stove, it's nice, but um, I think it's a little bit too tiny for the thing I use it for here, you see. I'm going with dog team and uh, I could easily have a little bit bigger one, maybe the next size. One of the problems with these small stoves is that when you you want a load of glow in the bottom of the of the stove, and this is too tiny for building up that glow bed or what you're calling it. So you had to feed it all the time with small sticks like this, and if you're putting like I done now, putting something bigger in, it's usually not good. And then it goes out and then it takes a while and then it starts again. So I had to blow a little bit more. We say good night to you. I will show you one more thing before I go to bed. <laughs> this is a battery pack and then I have these diodes here. So this kind of lamp, you see? It's really good. It lighten up the whole tent. I can really recommend that kind of lamps. But now, good night. <coughs> A new day. And... Uh, it has been snowing the whole night. I think it's time to wake up, make fire in the stove, and uh, start traveling snow around the tent and make a plan, maybe. Yeah. Look, it's so much snow. As <laughs> long <laughs> as we didn't tell you. The whole tent is gone almost. <laughs> we had this big tent and it's... Houston, Houston, we got the situation. Houston. <laughs> it's really a lot of snow. 
Huh. Yeah. Morning, Constance. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. I'm just putting up my boots. Fuck, it's snowy here. Yeah, and I, I woke up I woke up three times last night and tried to clear it as well. And it's <laughs> 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 Here we got the sled. This is really, really a lot of snow. And I really don't know how we should do today because shit. <coughs> Look. Dogs, dogs. And the sleds are really gone. Yeah. It's over my knees. Far over my knees. Look. Doggy dog. Not easy to be a dog musher in this weather. Yeah, I I think I'm not dehydrated at least. Coming from Ethermat. Mm. You can throw this in the pool. He's ready for career computer science. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Gandalf. Finally the dogs get some late breakfast and uh, I have a coffee pot on the fireplace so we can go in and make coffee. Here's Gandalf. We stay here today. So we had to cut some more firewood, prepare the starting trail for tomorrow and maybe go for a snowshoe hike or ski tour or something. It's a lot of snow, I think it dumped down half a meter until now when we have been here. So it's not really good condition for driving dogs. We it came it came three skiers, French skiers I think, and they were lost, they find our camp and we show them the way to the main trail. And they had done four or five kilometers with skis and they couldn't find the trail. So instead of fighting with the soft snow, we enjoy the day here, taking a day off. Tomorrow we're going into Tara Valley and the day after down to Orinjarka. So now the route 
the rest of the tour is more or less planned. That's great. Probably the dogs also enjoy your day off here. And especially now when it's this soft snow, it's no wind, we are camping, they hear our voice all the time. That's actually really, really, really good for the dogs. We'll see. Hey. But it's really beautiful. It is very beautiful. I've never seen so much snow in my life. <laughs> it's like living in a Christmas card. Yeah. It's sparkling like diamonds everywhere. Hard work. Yeah. So right now we're preparing the start trail for tomorrow. So I have a trail where we can start out with the dogs and you see it's kind of dense forest everywhere so it's difficult to find the way out with all these dog teams without ending up in a tree but we will make it somehow breaking like this it's much more important with a straight trail instead of a wide trail. So straight and narrow is better than wide and curvy. I'm happy to undo that because it's really just. I put we had to film the active, yeah, active <laughs> lifestyle in the tent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I brought the camera. Saturday, the, afternoon. The Saturday afternoon in northern Sweden. Welcome to our life. Three hours Gee, later, copy. it's exactly the same. <laughs> Can make exactly the same thing. Now 
I'm preparing wood for tomorrow. I just have some branches from spruce. It's not the really best ones, but that's what I found easily here in the deep snow. So I cut it in small pieces and they are so small so I don't need to dry them. <clears throat> Everybody else have gone to bed I think or are on the way to bed. It's easy for me now here. I just had to roll out my sleeping bag and go to bed. And then time to sleep. When I'm out like this, I use my Samsung smartphone. I use it for checking weather, if I have reception. And I use it for uh, updating Instagram and things like that. I could check email also on it, of course. When I'm in areas with uh, not so much uh, telephone coverage with bad reception, I put it in fly mode. If you have the telephone switched on when it's bad reception, it will consume battery because then it will work all the time very hard to try to find a uh, connection. So put the telephone in fly mode, switch it on when you need it and want to check something. When I charge the telephone I use a power bank. This is a night core 10,000 something milliampere power bank and um, the power bank should be kind of warm when you use it and the telephone should be kind of warm because then the battery uh, reacts better. I have 55% battery now in the telephone. I will charge it to probably like 80%. I don't charge it more or higher than that because the last 20% of uh, power to the telephone consume more of the power bank. So I don't go to 100%. I also have this night core power bank. It's also 10,000 milliampere, but this one have a function that it should work down to minus 40. Uh, operating temperature minus 20 Celsius to minus 40 Celsius, and then you can switch off a heater in it. I this works definitely. I don't know when you use it. It's a really good power bank, it's still kind of lightweight. Uh, I don't know when you need that one instead of that one, because I think it's so easy, especially with this small night core, it's so easy to warm it on the body or something like that. This power bank could be nice if you want to make long time lapse or uh, keeping your camera running outside for a while, then this night core can be nice otherwise I want the power bank to be warm and the telephone to be warm as I said before this power bank could also be nice if you use it together with some head torch for example because night core also make head torch that you can connect straight to the and use it as a battery for the head torch and then it's good if you can warm up the battery Right now it's actually the wind increase outside and um, it start falling snow from the trees and you can really hear high up the wind so it's probably much more windy higher up in the valley so we are in a really good place protected by the trees protected by the forest so now I have been here the whole day preparing the trail with snowshoes and so on even if you don't doing so much at least I get tired I think also my guests get tired outdoor all thing with clothes toilets and all that 
Now I will bring, I think I will bring Jesse and Ida inside to the tent and then time for sleeping bag. I've been dealing with the wood, brushing my teeth, sinks with water, cleaning up a little bit, organizing and uh, I will enjoy my sleeping bag now. A new day and uh, I start with some I prefer to dye coffee. That's actually what we call uh, powder coffee. I prefer to dye coffee. But I also have a normal pot on the way. Uh, I've been sleeping good. The dogs haven't been out even for peeing. And now the fire is going in the stove and I should go out and launch my drone because it's so beautiful outside, but I will not. I just enjoy to sit in here. It's so nice and cozy. So nice and cozy. Cutting some firewood. Putting some more firewood in the stove. Sipping on the coffee. Waiting for the shoes to be a little bit softer because there was solid frozen this morning it had been a cold night not very cold but a cold night today our plan is to make a day tour into Taravalle and uh, my group is still sleeping it's seven o'clock in the morning and uh, I had to try to wake them up somehow They are still sleeping. So I had to continue cutting wood and keep the fire going. And sipping on my coffee. Here we got the lost team. I can't really see Constance. Stanna! Stanna, Gandalf! Stanna! This is the moment when you want calm dogs. Are you okay? Up!
the mountain behind us and around us. This is one really beautiful valley, Terra Valley. A lot of people want to go into Rapa Valley, but I don't know. This valley have cabins, this valley have trail, and this valley is super beautiful also. There is some snowmobile traffic here, and uh, that's annoying sometimes, but like today, we have a trail, and that's not annoying. So when I look at the snow, I can see that it has been snowing here, and then it has been very windy. So I think last night the wind I heard was from, it was a serious wind and snow drift up here. Here, on that side, it was a big avalanche some year. It came all the way out on this lake. Up there, you see the wall with some ice fall on. There is a basioksa that have, if you listen to the stories, it should be an old Sami holy place for the sacrifice reindeer horn and silver and so the holy gate or the gate into the holy or something it's Pasioksa. I don't know if I pronounce it correctly in some anyway beautiful say hello to the holy gate you should always show respect to other people's religion and what they have done and Filming and driving is not so easy. <laughs> Now we came back to the tent and we was have feeding dogs, drinking coffee tea and we have had dinner. Everybody have walked back to their tent for sleeping and right now I try to organize all equipment here. Drying socks, making firewood and yeah, packing stuff. I need to go out the last time to to the sled and I will bring Jess and Ida back into the tent again and I'm looking forward to my sleeping bag. I keep the fire going and try to dry out some shoes here for Clarence and I actually will dry out my own shoes soon but I need them for walking out I keep feeding it. We have more firewood outside the tent that need to be cutted. And now I want a cup of tea also. So now I have to bring two wet dogs inside that's not exactly what I want to have inside a tent close to my sleeping bag but I really don't want to leave them outside 
they have so bad hair and they are quite skinny so they need to come inside towards so Stina and Stefan is two friends to us I didn't know they were in the area and they actually have one of our old dogs Ellen who is retired and I have her siblings here Ellen was not so interested in working as a professional sled dog as our other ones were so Ellen ended up with Stina and Stefan so here I get the note that they have left a small present for me in my sleeping bag from Nalo and Ellen. Nice! So now let's check what they have left. It could be something nice from them or it could be something that they want to make fun of me. So we will see. Everything is possible with Skin and Stefan. Candies. It was something nice. Thanks, Skin and Stefan. I will enjoy this to the evening tea. So, now these two guys are inside and they're super happy <laughs> but you need calm dogs when you bring them inside and you have a wood stove there water sleeping bags and all that kind of stuff that you don't want them to messing around with I don't know if you can see it, but this stove is really, really glowing. <laughs> really hot inside here. <laughs> Sour cola. Mm. Oh, it's like sour coke that you drink. The light I use here is one video lamp that I have put up there. And then I have uh, these diodes, you see, hanging around here. That's some Christmas thing we find that have three AA batteries. Uh, the video lamp I only switch on when I'm filming. And then of course I have my Nightcore headlamp. This one is NU43. Really easy lamp that you can charge from um, a power bank. And Ida enjoy the stove. I will show you. Probably Ida cannot really understand why she had to spend some hours outside every day. She's really a nice dog inside. Now my tea is soon ready. And I'm ready. Fadig. I'm done. My alarm just started. We decided that we should wake up six o'clock. It means snowing the whole night. And the tent is covered with some kind of wettish snow. Well, now I had to start the fire and then we had to prepare for breakfast. If 
nice when you can reach the wood stove from your sleeping bag. Now I had to jump into my shoes and you see. Take away this snow. Oi! Fuck my camera. Oof. <laughs> Nothing happened. So this inner boot, we have two loops on the back side. You take one loop, put it through the other one, and on that side, take just a piece of branch, put it through like this. Then you hang them like this for drying. Or Oh, the salty soup. Yep. Yeah. The salty yeah. soup, yeah. And don't turn her up, Trail. Well, the direction we are going in later, but further okay. along. Okay, because I'm heading back to my sled. There's a lot of colors. I don't know where to go. See a lot of colors. <laughs> <laughs> Only feeling blue. Oh, oh it's got. Oh. There's a lot of colors lost within a haze. Don't rely on others to get you through the maze. The dreams are not the same for me. We continue the ride along this fluffy trail through the nice forest. Look, isn't it beautiful? Huh? In Sweden we say, leave it leke. The life is playing. It's not fast, it's slow, it's smooth, it's nice, it's enjoyable. Do I talk a lot? No, not too much, but I talk a lot sometimes. That's my job to talk. Or I don't know. Crossing Sagat, we have 18k with this over snow blown trail, but at least we have snow. Last time I was here, we had only ice, and it could have been covered with water also because of all the heavy snow. But now we have actually a kind of good trail if we compare to what I expected it to be. in Orinarka and uh, we hooking up the dogs on the stakeout and we carry all the luggage up to the cabin and probably it's time for shower, cup of tea or coffee and then dinner in the restaurant. Lasse have been here with a snowmobile sled with some extra dog food that we got from Jokmok. Stina have sent it to us and uh, yeah that's how it is. On the way to dinner, mm -hmm. we put our dancing pants on. Dancing pants. Mm -hmm. 
on dancing shoes. And we're all dancing queens. Dancing. Mm. For ABBA, anyway. Here we go. Now, on our way into the dinner in the restaurant in Oranyarka. Really, really good. We are the only one. Might be one for start defense. I don't know what's on these tomatoes, but. They've been lucky again. The mess you sent is yours. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> Probably you can hear the other dogs on the other side of that ridge is Jörg right now preparing his 30 dogs something and guests for starting. We are also almost ready for start but our dogs are really relaxed now in the sunshine. But we making everything ready and then we will take off. Now we left Oranyarka and the start was not the best because there is no place for my sled to be anchored so when we're starting out again I can't leave my sled. But it is how it is. We just had to solve the problem. A little bit coldish. It was very warm when we were feeding the dogs but now the sun is in clouds as we say in Swedish. and. Uh, we're heading along the trail again towards Jokmok. As you see, the trail is freshly groomed here. It is uh, Lasse in Oranjarka. He just went out the first 15 kilometers and groomed the trail. Super, super, super nice. So if you want to do dog sledding and have nice trails, you should go to Oranjarka. This area is beautiful and you can be out here even if it's snowstorm because you are quite protected in the forest. So yesterday it was very nice with the shower, dinner, drying out, a little bit moisture shoes and so on. I usually say that two nights in tent is good, the third night it start being moisture. So two nights in tent is what I prefer and then a cabin if I choose comfort. So now we're driving through one of my favorite areas, the Pearl River Nature Reserve. It is a big area with low mountains, forest, old forest, and actually a small village in the middle, or two more small villages. Some people actually live in Dilseret. I'm running and kicking all the time also while I'm talking to you guys. <clears throat> this area contains a lot of high nature value, a lot of different spices and it's also important for biodiversity because it's such a big untouched area. It's not like a lot of the nature reserves, they are tiny, tiny, tiny. And you need this big area because otherwise we will lose spices and we will change behavior of animals also. 
So these big areas are important. <sighs> My plan was to sleep on the Isa mat and that Ida should sleep beside the Isa mat. But um, as you see, we, we actually have different plans. Temperature drops, as you see, I have put a bottle of hot water into the uh, cooling bag that actually are our heating bag so the blue one there you see it's actually cooler and in that I have, we have some cheese and tube cheese and when they freeze <laughs> they are like stove so I put a bottle of hot water there so tomorrow it will be okay I put another bottle when I wake up with hot water into that one and then it's okay now I have to get rid of my pros and shoes I stepped into water today when we crossed the lake so now I have frosty really really frosty shoes <sighs> Last night was quite cold. There was a week, no the light of the camp. Uh, we had some problem to find water and everything, but it was a late night and then it was a cold night. But it's not cold in the warm and cozy sleeping bag. So I think I slept through more or less the whole night, except when yes, I wanted to come into my sleeping bag. Anyway, we had breakfast eight o'clock and then it took us four hours until we enter the sled. Quite slow pace, I would say. But that's maybe not the city. Mm. Mm, no. Stockholm. How many kilometers is that? Stockholm. No. <laughs> Should I put some a, th um, a thousand or something. Yeah. Is it okay if I use this as scoop? Yeah. Okay. 